Now, local news about local people. This is Newslink Indiana. Hello, I'm Lindsay Jameson. Thanks for joining us. Investigators have determined the magnesium fire in Anderson was a case of arson. Federal investigator James Rose says they have ruled out all accidental causes in the January 14th Amicor Recycling Facility fire. The magnesium fire forced 8,000 people to evacuate their homes. An announcement scheduled for this evening could bring big changes to Gas City. Newslink Indiana's Megan Bastian explains while officials are tight-lipped about the specifics, they still can't hide their enthusiasm. Gas City hasn't seen this much excitement in 50 years. To me, it's great. It's, it's one of the greatest things that uh, I've seen in my lifetime. I've lived here all of my life. Grant County Economic Development Committee is expected to reveal whether or not a large perishable food distribution center will be built here. This empty field may soon represent 600 new jobs and a $60 million investment. It's estimated that the new structure will be more than 20 acres under one roof. Local business owners expect good things will happen when the project is completed. People have to buy gas and they have to eat and they have to sleep and have to buy clothes and they have to go to school. And so you can just see all the trickle down effect of that. It's just kind of that wave motion of what, uh, uh, what it's going to bring to uh, Gas City. Mayor Leach believes it's his city's sense of community that helped steal the deal. And I remember one of the executives going to the minister after the meeting and says how I gauge whether I want to put it put a plant in a community or not, is I asked myself, would I move my family to this community? And he said, I'll tell you right now, I would not hesitate to move my wife and children to Gas City, Indiana. In Gas City, Megan Bastian, Newslink, Indiana. The company plans to break ground in September of this year and expects to open its doors by April of 2007. Upcoming improvements to the High Street Bridge in Muncie will do more than just ease the flow of traffic. The plan is for new pedestrian walkways along with a concrete cantilever bridge to be added. It will be similar to a pier that will be eight feet long. Delaware Greenways hopes this will be, bring more people to the walkway and also make the bridges safer for pedestrians. should increase um, users along the Greenway, but more importantly, it's a safety factor. Anybody that's walked on the High Street Bridge or if you've tried to ride a bike on the High Street Bridge or along Wheeling Avenue, it's not safe for the bridge and walkway should be completed in December of 2005. Funeral services were held yesterday in Alexandria for the father of Grammy-winning gospel singer Bill Gaither. George Gaither lost his battle with lung cancer Thursday and had served for the past 30 years on his son's concert tour. The Gaithers have performed all over the country in a recording studios and a family resource center in Alexandria. Bill Gaither was recently honored with a Christian Songwriter of the Century by the American Society of Composers, Authors, and Publishers. The mayor of Portland held his State of the City address at noon today. Newslink's Jamie Jones reports on his plans for the city. The Portland Chamber of Commerce met in the Jay County Hospital Conference Room to hear Mayor Bruce Hosier's plans for the city. Hosier wants to revitalize Portland's downtown. The old Weiler Building between Main and Water Streets will become the John Jay Learning Center, and the Jay Pride Building across the street will be a resource center for county construction. By the Meridian Street Bridge, where a lumberyard used to be, Hoosier plans to have a park built this May to commemorate veterans. Hoosier also said he was pleased with Portland's performance following the recent ice storm and flooding. We'll have community spirit about working together as, as a community, and no matter what the challenges are ahead for us, that we approach those challenges uh, not with fear, but with a great hope. Jay County Commissioner Milo Miller introduced his plans for improving the county, including providing jobs for local graduates, expanding the use of broadband internet service, and cleaning up ice storm debris. It's a tough situation. You try to keep the tax base down, and you try to do all the things that uh, people would like to do. And Hosier and Miller say they will continue to work to stimulate economic growth. In Portland, Jamie Jones, Newslink, Indiana. Commissioner Miller hopes to get money from FEMA to help the county repair flood damage. Now Jennifer Cook joins us with a look at our forecast. Jennifer, it seems to be warmer the last couple of days. Yes, we have seen warmer temperatures out there and the sun finally came out from beneath the clouds today, but unfortunately we're going to see a change for the day on Wednesday. Anyways, for today, on Tuesday, we saw with the sun come back from outside of those clouds and it's going to continue on the weekend, although we will see a change for the day tomorrow. On our almanac, you can see high 40 degrees for the day today, seven degrees above average, our low is right at average at 16 degrees. 
on contour, you can see we're seeing cooler temperatures because we're seeing this trough of cold air for the day tomorrow. We're gonna see a cold front move in. So we're gonna see colder temperatures in our area and up to the north, 30 degrees, Fort Wayne, 54 down to our southwest. But where you see the cold front is to the north, you can see we're seeing warmer temperatures with 59 and 65 to our south. On Precision Cast, you can see we're going to see these cold fronts move through our area. It's going to increase the cloud coverage for the night tonight, and it's going to bring in some sprinkles. When we zoom in on Precision Cast, you can see cloud coverage begins around Tuesday at 8 p.m. Then we're going to see those sprinkles begin to move slowly into our area. But around 7 p.m. tomorrow, as the temperature dips below the freezing point, we're going to see some of that rain change over to snow. Then we're going to see all the precipitation move out to the east. We're going to see the sun return to our forecast for the day on Thursday. But for Tuesday night, we're going to see increasing clouds, low 30 degrees. For Wednesday, we're going to see that once again, a chance for sprinkles. Then once the temperature dips below freezing, we have the chance for flurries, high 35 degrees. Then our five-day forecast. We're going to see the sun return for Thursday and Friday, then our next chance for precipitations on Saturday and Sunday, and we're going to top off those days well above average, but when we get to our low, we're going to see those colder temperatures. That's why some of that precipitation could change over to rain. Oh, colder temperatures don't sound too much better. Yes, that's true. Getting up early to exercise in the morning is a challenge for most adults, but it's no sweat to some students in Anderson. Newslink Indiana's Nicholas Ferrari shows us their workout. It's 7.30 a.m. at Anderson's Eastside Middle School. And these students are arriving at homeroom. These 6th and 7th graders are known as the wide-eyed walkers. But don't let the name fool you. They do much more than just walk. Two days a week, the students do a strength training workout. The other two days, they do a cardiovascular workout. On the fifth day, they participate in a school-wide reading day. Physical education teacher Stacy Brewer came up with the idea for the homeroom after noticing that many of our students' fitness test scores fell below state and national level. We have to put our kids in a position where they're going to excel everywhere, not just academically. Um, their physicality is very much a part of that. Some students in the class have noticed the early exercise makes them more alert during the day. And others, like Courtney Collins, have made additional discoveries. I have muscles I didn't even know about. <laughs> Since the beginning of the year, you know, my abs weren't very good, but now I can start seeing them form into like the two-pack and the four-pack. So that, that really makes me happy. With such motivation, students may very well continue their exercise routine when they're not in school. Every exercise that we show them, they are very capable of doing at home. You don't need weights. You don't need fancy equipment. You don't need, you know, $150 a month membership to a, to a gym. With many students' fitness levels improving, there's no doubt the Wide-Eyed Walkers program's working out. In Anderson, Nicholas Ferreri, Newslink, Indiana. While the program is currently open only to 6th and 7th graders, it will expand next fall to include 8th grade. And that's Newslink, Indiana. For Jennifer Cook, I'm Lindsay Jameson. Join us again Wednesday at newslinkindiana.com for more news.